Hello friends, welcome back to the Craft Castle. My name is Ashley and are you a Cricut user that's looking into possibly purchasing an X-Tool laser machine? If the answer is yes, you have found the right place because what we're gonna do today is we are gonna design an SVG file within X-Tool's Creative Space program and I'm gonna use my machine to cut it all out. However, here's the kicker, is that even if you don't have the X-Tool machines, you can still do this entire tutorial, make the SVG file with me and then export it and I'll show you how to do that all within this tutorial. The reason why I'm doing this is because I know as an experienced crafter, the last thing any crafter wants to do is learn a whole new software. Learning a software is not fun. That I know is the biggest drawback to purchasing a whole new machine is learning a whole new program. So that's why I'm here to help you learn a new software. And so you feel less frustrated before ever purchasing the machine. I always say when you ever are looking into purchasing a new machine from a new company that you should try and learn the software first. Get an idea and a feel as to if this program or machine is gonna be right for you. So today what I'm gonna do, just to recap for you, is I'm gonna show you how to make an SVG file within Xtools Creative Space. You can, without ever purchasing the machine, download the program and also export your S SVG files. I'm gonna show you how to do that and I will show you how we're gonna take our SVG file from here and put it into Cricut Design Space. Now, if you are a seasoned Cricut user, you will know that you cannot export your SVG file. So the vast difference between these two softwares is one you can for free, the other one you can't ever. All right, are you ready to learn how to make your own SVG file within Xtools Creative Space for free? Let's go. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over into new project. Now I'm gonna be using my Xtool M1 Ultra for this project. So I need to change this over from P2 down to my M1 Ultra. I don't have my M1 Ultra on right now, but I will in a little bit. And I'm just going to switch it over to make sure that all of my parameters that I need to use for my M1 Ultra is how I create my file. So I'm just gonna press switch. The reason why this is so important is, is do you see this white box that's right here? This is my bed size or my cutting area of my M1 Ultra. Okay, the very first thing I'm gonna do is create the backer of my sign. So I'm just gonna select this shape or I'm just gonna hover over it and I'm gonna use a circle. I'm gonna create a circle sign today. So we're just going to create this circle. If you hold shift on your keyboard and also create your shape, you're gonna see that my circle is gonna be like a circle instead if I don't hold shift, it ends up being, you know, I can make it an oval if I wanted to. So I'm just gonna press shift and I'm gonna make this as large as I can make it for my sign. Now for this particular project, I want it to look like a sheet of notebook. So what I'm going to do is come back over here and I'm gonna press line and I'm gonna make some lines that go across my circle. If you hold shift on your keyboard again, it's going to make it a straight line. If you don't hold shift on your keyboard, it's going to be able to wiggle around. Keeping it like that will make it a straight line. And then when I have one straight line, I'm just gonna copy and paste and I'm gonna make multiple lines throughout this just so it looks like a sheet of notebook paper. Don't worry about the spacing so much because we can fix that here in a second. Or size, we'll fix both of those. All right, so I like the amount of lines that I have currently. So what I'm gonna do is select my lines. If your circle also gets selected into this, just press shift on your keyboard and click that circle. It will unselect your circle and then you'll only have selected your lines. Then what you want to do is you can let go of the shift now on your keyboard is I want to align these to the center, but then I also wanna come over here to this distribute button and I'm gonna distribute these vertically. Now, when I do that, watch what happens with my lines. Do you see how they all shifted? So now these lines are obviously way too short for my circle. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my little arrow and I'm just gonna make them longer, fitting onto my circle. Okay, now what I need is my vertical line because every sheet of paper has a vertical line, right? So I'm gonna take one of my, I'm gonna take the longest one of my lines and I'm gonna copy and paste or Command C, Command V, or you could right click and do copy and paste right here. 
The cool thing is, is that X tool has your keyboard shortcuts over here on the right. So if you didn't know the keyboard shortcuts, like if you're using a Windows computer, you could see them right here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this around to 90 degrees. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna turn it to 90. And I'm gonna place this line over here. And now I'm gonna make this line the same thing like what we did with the horizontal lines. I'm gonna make this line fit onto my board. So this one right here is gonna be a vertical line. Now we have pretty much what looks like a sheet of notebook paper. However, we are missing two holes. I think I'm gonna be able to put two holes into this, making it really look like a sheet of notebook paper. Look, if you don't know anything about me, just know that I love making things look like they truly are supposed to look. I have a problem with that. So we're gonna take that circle, the original circle that we already have, and I'm gonna copy and paste, Command C, Command V. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna make this circle smaller because it obviously needs to look like the holes of a notebook paper, okay? I'm gonna put one right here, copy and paste, and then I'm gonna put the other one right here. Now, do you see these lines that are popping up on the X tool program? That is where now it's completely centered. So I actually don't even have to worry about making sure it's completely centered because the X tool creative space is already telling me I'm perfectly centered. So I'm just going to click on that and that looks good. I think that looks fabulous. What do you think? Do you love this? Okay, so now what I want to do is insert the text that I'm gonna use for my project. So I'm gonna come over here into this T and I'm gonna click anywhere inside my workspace. Now what I'm gonna do is insert the lettering that I need to use for my sign. And here's the deal. If you're gonna be doing first day of school, making it four lines, let's just do one line. So I'm gonna do first, okay? Trust the process. Now what I'm gonna do is I am going to choose the font that I'm going to use for this project. When I have my font selected, I'm just gonna click out of it and I'm gonna resize this to the size that I want. Now what I'm gonna do is with this line, I'm gonna copy and paste. So Command C, Command V. And I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna do day. Don't resize this because I've already sized that first one to the size that I need. And then what we need to do is copy and paste and we'll do of, double click on this. And now for the last one, we're gonna do school. Okay, now what you can do is when you have all the lines, you can readjust your lines or your lettering to fit your needs. Now I am done with the design process and this is what my sign is going to look like. However, I'm going to take it one step further because if you plan on exporting this SVG and importing it into like Cricut Design Space or a different laser program, you're going to want to make sure that these circles are cut out through the backer circle. So what I'm going to do is selecting these smaller circles that are right here. I'm going to select one, shift my keyboard and the other one. I'm going to come over here to combine and then I'm going to press shift on my keyboard again, again and click that larger circle. And I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna press subtract. Okay, and then the next thing that I'm gonna do to make sure that we have everything exactly the way it needs to for a file that you'll be able to sell or use in another spot is you're gonna click all the fonts. So every single font that you have and you're gonna come over here to Unite. Okay, so now what you want to do is if you're gonna be exporting this SVG to another spot, what you wanna do is come over here to this X. You see that drop down box? We're gonna click on it and do File, and then we're gonna to go to Export SVG. This one right here, we're just gonna do First Day of School Sign. You can name it whatever you want and just press Save. Now, just to show you that it does work in a different program, I'm gonna open up Cricut Design Space. I'm gonna go over into new project and then press upload. And then we're gonna upload image. Going into browse, I'm gonna find the file that we just made together. We're gonna click on it and press open. Okay, and then for whatever reason, that line right there is scooted up. I'm not entirely sure why, but if we press continue and then press upload, all you would need to do is right click this, press ungroup and move that line back down to where it's supposed to be. And then here is your finished SVG file that we created for free within Xtool Creative Space. Okay, so let's go back over to Creative Space because I wanna show you how we are gonna set this up so it's going to cut perfectly in that M1 Ultra. 
So first and foremost, what I need to do, because I'm using a laser, I have a little bit more prep work that I need to do. So the very first thing that I need to do is, is I need to take this, this right here and I'm gonna copy and paste. I'm gonna create a, a whole different thing right here. This layer right here, I am going to score that into my backer of my sign so I know exactly where to put all of my lettering, okay? So because I have this nicely spaced out, I don't want to then just willy-nilly it and make it look like garbage, so I'm going to keep it all right here. Okay, so everything else is automatically set to score when you're in Xtool Creative Space. However, I need to select my circle, and I need to change this from a score to a cut. Then what I'm going to do is come over here to the first day of school, and I'm also going to cut this out. So I'm going to go, go ahead and press cut, and then click out of that. Now what we want to do is go over to our M1 Ultra and turn that puppy on and set it up so we can finish making this sign. Okay, so when I originally got my M1 Ultra, I got the 10 watt laser head, but then Xtool ended up selling, sending me the 20 watt laser head. The difference between the two is, is that more laser power means that you're gonna be able to cut faster and cut thicker material. So it is kind of important that you have as much wattage as possible for your lasers. So this 10 watt, honestly, I'm probably never gonna use this 10 watt laser head. I'm always gonna use this 20 watt. All you need to do is just flip this thing, pull it out, put your new head in and switch it. It is that easy to switch your materials. Now what we're gonna do is we are gonna turn the Xtool M1 on. Now I now have the honeycomb tray, which is great. So I'm gonna insert a piece of my wood that I am going to be using into my project. And I'm gonna be using my little clap down things just so it holds my material in place and doesn't wiggle around on me. Going over into the Xtool program, what I want to do is connect my machine now. So I'm gonna come over here and press connect. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is just press this mark processing area. Because the Xtool M1 Ultra doesn't have a camera, you could use your phone if you wanted to, but honestly, I'm not really too worried about seeing a live picture. I'm just gonna press that mark processing area. And then we'll just create a polygon because that's gonna be the most accurate and then press start marking. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to take our head and we are going to come, I'm going to come down to the very bottom left first. Do you see this little arrow tool, this like little aiming red thing? What you want to do is put the corner on the corner of your material. When you have that done, you just want to press the white button. Then we're going to move the head over to the bottom left, doing the same thing, pressing the white button. We're going to go over here to the top left, doing the same thing and to the top right, doing the same thing. Okay, when you're done doing that, all you wanna do is just press end marking on your computer and then press done. Okay, so do you see this rectangle that's on my screen right here, that black rectangle? That is where my material is at. So what I need to do now is resize my sign to fit inside the material that I'm gonna be using. So I'm gonna press Command E A or select all and I am going to just make this smaller. So I am going to cut my sign out in the same wood as my first day of school. However, I am going to paint my first day of school, the letters of them. Um, the problem is, is when we welded this together, do you see how it no longer fits onto my piece of wood? I know I'm just gonna need one, pe one uh, piece of wood for this project. So all I'm gonna do is just re come over here and put release compound vector everything is gonna be released, and now I'm just gonna be able to select all of my letters individually. I'm gonna do it in groups. You could do it individually if you wanted to. And I'm just going to rearrange these and put them onto my piece of wood because like I said, I do know that everything will fit. I just need to make it fit. You wanna make sure that everything fits onto your piece of wood that you're gonna be creating. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my user defined material. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna choose the three millimeter basswood plywood, that's what I'm using today, and just press confirm. Okay, when we do that, what should happen is, is when you click on the cut, it should already give you settings that you are going to use. Okay, one last thing we need to do is set the distance of our material from our head. This just ensures that we're gonna get really good high quality cuts. So going back over into the Xtool M1 Ultra, all you wanna do is take your head 
and put it onto your material. Doesn't matter where, just put it on your material and then close the lid. Now all we need to do is press this ruler that's right here and it's gonna do an auto focus. This just ensures, like I said, that we're gonna get some really good high quality cuts. Okay, when we're done doing that, all we need to do is just press go to process. It's gonna take the machine a total of six hour, or six minutes and 34 seconds, so we're just gonna press start. Okay, when it comes to the M1 Ultra, if you're using the laser feature, which I am, you want to make sure you take your vent and vent it out of a window. Or if you have an air filter, use the air filter. Now with that, you just wanna press the silver button on your machine, and you're gonna let the X tool do the cuts. Please know how quiet this machine is. It is beyond quiet. It's one of my most quietish machines that I do own from the X-Tool company. All right, now that it's finished, I can tell that I actually messed up here. Do you see this right here? My thing was in the way, so it didn't cut that all the way through. So I'm gonna have to recut my letter F. Everything else cut perfectly fine. So let's just take this out and you can see all the letters are just gonna pop out real easy. So besides this letter F, because I messed up on that letter F, so I will have to cut that out, but everything else will be just fine. Okay, so now that we have all of the lettering cut out properly, you're gonna notice that I have a little bit of charring on my sign. If you didn't like that charring, all you would need is a little bit of sandpaper and you would just sand that off. The other thing too is if, to avoid that is just to use masking tape over your project and the masking tape will actually be the buffer to where you wouldn't have any type of charring at all you would just take the masking tape off and then the charring would go off with the masking tape okay so for this project my most favorite glue that i've been using for my wood and acrylic is going to be maker's magic today i'm going to be using maker's magic matte the reason for that is is because the wood is a matte finish there's not gonna be any gloss to it. So I don't wanna use the original Maker's Magic gloss because I don't want it to be glossy, just in case I get messy with my glue. Now, I most of the time use something like this where it's re-bottled into a needle nose bottle. I'm not gonna be using this today because this right here is the Maker's Magic gloss. So I'm not using that. And for this, I'm just gonna use a paintbrush to paint my glue on. So just taking a paintbrush and my, and my Maker's Magic. I'm just gonna paint on some glue inside my letters. Now this stuff does dry really quick, which is why I've been using it lately is because it does dry so quick. The silicone glue that I was using for my projects took about 24 hours to dry. And frankly, that was just a pain in the butt to wait for something to dry for 24 hours. So using this stuff and having it dry so quickly is amazing. All right, now that everything is glued on there, you can go ahead and wait for this to dry if you wanted to, or I'm just gonna go start getting ahead of the game and just painting it because it's nice and stuck on there as it dries anyhow. So I'm not worried about it like slipping off me. Look at how cute this finished sign looks. Obsessed. Now that you've learned how to make your own SVG file, what do you think? Do you think that the program is actually not that hard to learn or do you think that it's actually really confusing? You let me know in the comments of this video because I really truly want to know what your opinions are. For me personally, I think that it is very user friendly and easy to use, but I need to gauge what you think. Like what is your opinion on the x Tools Creative Space? Do you think it's easier to use than Cricut Design Space? Or do you think it's harder to use? Do you think it's confusing? What's your opinion? All right, y'all, I sure hope I inspired you to create and I'll see you later.